four, check mic four, one, two, three, four. Testing mic four. You good, Vince? Okay. Coach Leggett, Jack will be down here in just one minute. Uh, as a heads up, the student athletes from the University of Buffalo will be Stephanie Reed, Sierra Dillon, and Cassie Ausler. And as a reminder, please silence your cell phones, raise your hand for the microphone prior to asking questions, and please identify yourselves as well as your affiliation once you're ready to ask that question. Thank you. And for the, the questions for the student athletes, please address the student athlete by name so we know who is uh, going to answer the question. Thank you.
At this time, we'll get started with our second pr press conference for the uh, NCAA Women's Basketball Regional. Coach, congratulations Thank you so on much. advancing. If you would, please uh, provide some opening remarks, and then we'll open it up to the questions. Absolutely. Even though I'm a God who's ahead of my life, I was so grateful to be here uh, today and be with my, a, a great group of young women uh, to tell our story. I just want to give a shout out to our commissioner of the MAC, thanking him for all he's done for our conference and letting him know that we're, we're with him in this time of sadness. Thank you. We start in the back on the left. Coach Matt Dowell, Watch Fox out of Columbia, South Carolina. Here to your left. Okay. Hey. Um, we all know what Asia Wilson is capable of and how good of a player she is. What is the game plan to try and stop her from having a huge game? A tickler. <laughs> Everyone tried everything else, and she still averaged a high double-double. So our plan is um, someone go low, someone go high, but nevertheless, we're into the tickle motion. You know, you can't stop someone as good as Asia. I just be honest. I, I'm on a committee, and I, I, I voted for her to be the player of the year. And... Uh, it's a wonderful thing that it's a team sport. It's going to take all five of them for 40 minutes. Uh, but she, she's a special player. No disrespect to what she's capable of doing. We are not going to stop her. And we are comfortable understanding that. As we were comfortable understanding, we were not going to stop the young lady at Florida State. But if we can all show up and do our small part, we can have a chance to have a success in the game for 40 minutes. You know, South Carolina is a special team. We have to play them 10 times. I, I got to lean on the fact that they could probably get us by nine of them. At 11.30, we're going to find out how much we can do against one of the best teams in the country. Up here on the right. Hi, Felicia. All you have to do is beat the defending champions and then perhaps UConn. <clears throat> how do you convince your players that this moment is not too big for them? Uh, you know, before South Carolina became – a national champion, uh, there's a young lady that was a head coach at Temple who hoped that she can become something significant as well. And she took over a team that wasn't already established and she built something from, from some nothing to something. And in order for us to uh, find our way, we have to take steps and it's a big step for sure. Uh, one thing that we're not gonna do is uh, put our focus on South Carolina. We've not put our focus on any team that we've ever played. We're gonna put our focus on the foxhole that we're in, the 14 young ladies that believed in our vision, and we're gonna fight real hard to, to make Buffalo proud, make our university proud, make our families proud, most importantly, to leave it out there, and then when we look in the mirror, we can make ourselves proud. Rick Henry, WISTV, Columbia, yes. South Carolina. Hello, yes. Coach. Hello. Um, you just mentioned um, having an opportunity to tell your story. How would you sum up your story? You know, fight. You know, I come from a a mother who raised five children, retired, making $36,000. She shared with us that we have no choice but to be sig significant in this world. Uh, she did everything with a smile. She tithed every single day, every single week. And uh, for some reason, she found money to tithe and always had enough money for our family. And so if she can do it and become, we have no choice because at least we have four other people, my brothers and my sisters. And so no thing is too great for us because we saw a lady become and she raised five great children. So uh, as big as the mountain may seem, all we ask God to do is give us the strength to continue to give us to take the step. And if we got the strength to take the step, we can keep climbing. And so that's what we do. We do it every day. We do it through success. Uh, we had great success. My college coach is in the back right there and she pushed us to a, a strong foundation. We do it through failure. Last job I failed. You just keep moving, and you just say, if you keep giving me the strength to take the step, I'm going to keep trying to climb. Thank you. Jerry, over here on the left. Uh, hi, Felicia. Uh, hi. Jerry Longman with the New York Times. Earlier today, Dawn was talking about um, how mid-majors have, you know, started recruiting better and recruiting more creatively, and she talked about you, you know, uh, recruiting international players. Can you sort of talk about that strategy and how that may be necessary when you're trying to recruit against these Power Five schools? You know, I, I never looked at myself as a mid-major coach or a mid-major uh, team. I, I looked at myself as a coach going after people that want to tell their story. Uh, I, I, came, I thought about that when I was an assistant coach at, at Boston College and Syracuse and Michigan State. 
uh, when I was the head coach at Hofstra in Indiana, I never told them that, you know, we're in the mecca of a conference or a team at Indiana, nor did I tell them that Hofstra uh, was uh, not as big as a St. John's in the state of New York. We just promoted what we had. We were in New York, we're the mecca of the world. Uh, at Buffalo, I thought we were a hidden jewel, a, a program that had no uh, success in women's basketball, and we can be the first to ha make it happen. Are you interested? Will you try to come and help? And uh, the young ladies that said yes clearly were ladies that didn't have a lot of people saying, you know, we want you too. <laughs> and so together we became and we fought and we, 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 we have a, a system we call CAP. I didn't want to bring players into my our program without understanding their character will perceive their academics and their academics will perceive their, their basketball. And we thought that we can coach people that had character and academics, even if they didn't have strength in, in basketball. We thought we had a great coaching staff and Sheree Hogg and uh, Casey Carter and uh, Kristen Sharkey and, and Corinne Moss that we can develop. And uh, those young ladies said yes. They stayed in the fight. They kept fighting with us. And uh, here we are. Buffalo was, from international players, where Buffalo was and what it was about? Well, you know, I told the truth. I have a coach that isn't always so truthful. Her name is Cherie Ha Cordoba. She was telling the, the Australians that it didn't snow, you know, and they, they had a choice. They could have looked and saw that it was, no, it was snow everywhere. And so, no, she didn't say it snowed. She said it didn't snow a lot. And so when uh, Stephanie and uh, Courtney came, for an entire winter, they never knew that we had lakes, little like ponds behind the dormitories. And then, you know, I think around June when the snow melted, they like, we didn't even know it was water out here. So uh, I tell you, I, I'm good, but you got somebody that's on the fence about the truth in, in, on my staff, and I'm not going to say her name out loud. <laughs> up here to the right. Philadelphia, third Philadelphia Inquirer again this weekend. The, uh, I know you and Dawn go way back. you have any good funny stories or whatever from back in the day? I don't, but I, it's an honor to, to see you, sir. You've done so much for women's basketball. Thank you for what you do. But uh, to me, Dawn has always been real serious. I, I don't know her personally, per se. I, I just know that she's a fighter. I know I watched her as a player at, uh, when she was at Virginia kind of consistently get to the final four. I know that she's a ferocious competitor and winner. And uh, when you that way all the time, I just never saw her laughing. I just saw her competing, trying to win. <laughs> Amy? Amy March in the Buffalo News. Felicia, with the, the big moment, and I know you talk about your stories being, you know, fight, but you guys have also talked about being goofy and, and really enjoying and having fun. How much do you, how do you balance? How do you balance that this is a big moment, and, but you also want to, to have fun and, and, and bring a little bit of swagger you guys have? I think our kids call it quirky, you know, we, they got, because they're so smart. They come up with these words that sound like it's like sophisticated, but if you look at it, it's just silly and we're quirky. And we, we laugh hard, we laugh a lot, but they absolutely understand once we cross that blue line on our court, we, talk, we pay attention totally to what their dreams are. They want to win. They want to tell their story. They want to become WNBA players. They want to play overseas. And, you know, they, they say that. I have two personalities. I'm a mom, fun, and loving, but something happens to me and us when we cross that line and we recognize that we're, we're in the battlefield for something bigger than basketball. It's our story to be told. And so uh, it's just kind of something that happens, and sometimes it doesn't happen, and we just right away get on the line, let's go, let's run, you know. And it's sometimes when we go through drills and they're not going hard enough, I just jump out there and I just show them this is how hard we're going to go. And at 51, in my mind, I'm still thinking that I'm that college player that played for Coach Jacobs and, you know, making some Hall of Fame stuff. My body is telling me, no, you I, I'm up there trying, this is how you make the layup. You, the layup won't go in. And, but they, they get the point that I'm trying to, if it's going to have to be, it's going to be me. And if it's not going to be you, you want me to come out there and do it? Because I will. And so they, they get that piece. And it eventually, at the beginning, they did. And it was kind of weird thinking that, you know, they thought I was coming after the, the person, and I'm just coming after the player relentlessly, and uh, I've just been that way all of my life, and I, I brought in 14 players that understand this quirkiness. Over here to the left. 
Coach, just wondering, what has the reception been like back in Buffalo from the city and the school? And are you expecting tomorrow to pretty much be a home game for you guys? I don't want this to be taken any other way, but this is just who I am. Everywhere I go, I think we're at a home game. We're in Florida, we're in Arizona, we're, you have to think you belong there. And if you don't, then you are going to be a visitor. And when you're a visitor, you always be, you can be asked to leave at any time. And so when we go there with that understanding, um, it was really nice to see the, the, the governor tweet out that he's proud of what we're doing. It's really nice to see our mayor get excited. It's really amazing to see the Buffalonians. I mean, you, we know how, how crazy our, our Buffalonians can be when they go after those Buffalo uh, Bills and, and those Sabres. You have that same group of blue collar people really be proud of what we're doing. It's just so humbling, so exciting, and we want to leave it out there for, for them to really continue that pride. Tim in the back. Coach, Tim Wilkin from the Albany Times Union. After you win two games in the tournament as an 11 seed, does the confidence start building, or is it like, when is this going to end kind of deal? Or how, what is going through your team's minds as they prepare for the Sweet 16? And most people probably didn't think you'd be here. Well, we always thought we were going to be here. We just never got here. <laughs> Ever since I started coaching 28 years, I, 28 years ago, that, that's the expectation. That, that's the mindset. And so many coaches that, that, that really – have the same kind of mindset. We were blessed to to to, to take this another step, but I'm not smart enough to know about 11 and two and three and five and those numbers. That that doesn't mean anything when the ball goes in the air. You somebody, if that's the case, somebody forgot to tell Loyola. You know, on the men's side, somebody forgot to tell Jim Beheim. and so we say that you know, in 40 minutes, anything can happen, and we we want something magical to happen. We've been creating magic since June. And uh, our, our oneness, our sisterhood, our foxo, our fight, and our, our stubbornness to quit, our, you know, the, the coach pushed so hard, and you, you get on the barrel, and you, you let it all out of your body. And, and I say, you let, need to go see the trainer. No, coach, I need to finish this champion. We, we got 12 more to go. And the champions, well, if you know to be a champion, you got to do 15 of them. I'm at 12. I cannot stop because I have to do it all over again the next day. And so the fight has been predicated since, since June. And and to, to think that it's a is a, a weirdness that we're winning. We've been winning in preseason. We've been winning in the summer. And the expectation is to win all the time. And and if you don't score as more points than the next team, I'm hoping that the win can be something that you left look in the mirror and say, you know what? I left it out there. There's nothing else left. And therefore we continue to win. So, Coach, my question's kind of following up on that. When you're hearing people calling you guys a Cinderella team, um, you're not a Cinderella team because you're not winning at the buzzer and you're, you know, the way you've handled yourselves. Does it um, irk you or when you hear you being called that? But you're not. You've proven you're one of the top teams in the country. How does that make you feel? Well, I, I, it makes me feel like they saw me dance before. They, you know, they know I can dance. And they, I think that's a, that's a compliment, you know. <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, I, I, don't, I don't let anybody's expectations of who we are become our, our significance. It never has before. I, I've never uh, looked at other people's success and say, oh, man, I'm so jealous. Nor did I say there's never going to be a time that we're not going to become because the work ethic never changed. Uh, so we don't care if you, you know, not, no disrespect if somebody thinks that's a, this is a fluke. We don't really get excited if they write say, yeah, we, we should have done this. You know, we just stay locked into our, our, our sisterhood and our family. You know, I have 14 great kids that I'm just trying to extend it as long as I can. And um, to have this opportunity here late in March to, to be with these young ladies and to sit in that restaurant last night, they can go anywhere they want to have dinner. These young ladies want to go to Red Lobster, I mean, <laughs> a chain restaurant. And they sat in that restaurant and they laugh so hard that Sierra and Stephanie are reduced to tears. And, and they, everybody just start laughing. Nobody know what they're laughing at to this day. And I say, Coach, take a picture of this. These are the moments that make more, mean more to me than a ball ever going in the hole. They're never going to remember, you know, how far they went. I don't know how far we have went at, at Syracuse. But I do know 30 years later, we still get together with our coach in, in the summer, go on vacation and tell stories that I know for a fact never happened. But we tell them so much, it sounds like they did. So that's what I pray for this team is that they create 
these stories and these fun times, things that are more important than the ball going in the hole to remember for the rest of their lives. Doug? Hey, Coach, Doug Feinberg, the AP. I know you've talked a lot about this week about the, the MAC and you guys in Central Michigan. I mean, it's sort of the hidden gem that no one outside of women's basketball kind of knew how good the MAC was, and here we are having two teams still playing that are doing well in this tournament, and as we said before, aren't just winning at the buzzer, but winning handily on the road. When we lost to um, Central Michigan in, in a championship game, and some people thought that we blew it. I'm like, you need to, you need to guard Presley for 40 minutes, a kid that can hit half court shots. And it's and and they have such they have Frost who can rebound with anybody in the country. She can probably jump about five inches off the ground. She's a six feet at best. Her timing on rebound is the best I've ever seen, and that's some, that's the strength that I I really love into my heart. I'm like, I just hope that people can see what we went through. And I think that Sue would say the same thing about a few of my players and the things that we've done. And to have this opportunity where the world can see us and what we really are about in the MAC conference, including Toledo's, the Ball States, and uh, it's Ohio a couple of years ago who got left out, who were 26 and something and didn't get an at-large bid four years ago. I am so grateful that he chose us to, to, to tell the story because we're not really just fighting for Buffalo and saying, look how great Buffalo is. And she's not talking about just Central Michigan. It's an entire MAC conference that uh, we got a guy named Ricky Stokes, who's our commissioner for women's and men's basketball. From He played at Virginia, a big time player. For him to be in the MAC for so many years, he saw something a lot earlier than we did. I think now I pray that everyone would just take teams and just say, this team's RPI, this body of work, this boom, 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 they belong because that team without a name on it. Oh, it's Buffalo. Oh, it's Central Michigan. Oh, it's the MAC. We're not there yet for sure because I know about, you know, names got to be in so women can get the respect and, and the, the fan base and all that stuff. But in this crazy dream of mine, I still dream that you can just – by the creed of work, not the, the, the complexion of the name or the conference. We're on our way, we're just not there yet. We've run out of time with Coach. Uh, for additional questions, please see Louie, and he'll be able to assist. We'll have the student athletes up here momentarily. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for all you do for women's basketball.
Joining us on the dais is Stephanie Reed, Sierra Dillard, and Cassie Ausler. We will begin with questions from the media. Ladies, please make sure you're speaking directly into the microphone so that we can pick it up through our webcast as well as within the building. Questions for our student athletes, please. Doug? Hey guys, Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. For all three of you, I mean, has this sunk in at all that you're in the Sweet 16 now, a chance to move on further? You're playing four hours or so from Buffalo. You'll probably have a lot of fans tomorrow that you're still playing basketball in the middle of March or end of March? Um, I mean, yesterday I was scrolling through, you know, the, the sports channels, and there's no women's games playing. So I think it hit me then also because there's no games to be played except the ones we're about to play in. So um, I think that's pretty cool. See you. Um, well, uh, a little bit. Um, I think after the games of uh, USF and Florida State kind of hit you what you did. But, you know, Coach Jack does an amazing job of keeping your mind focused on, you know, what's going on next. And we've just been locked in on um, playing um, South Carolina and just focus on, on Buffalo and focus on what we're going to do to prepare for the game. And Stephanie? Um, yeah, after the last win at Florida State, you know, the next morning you kind of wake up and you wonder if it's still a dream. And then, you know, it kind of sinks in over the week. And now we're really focused on the game tomorrow. And, you know, we're really excited to be here. And it's, it's really exciting, obviously. But, you know, we've got to get focused and compete at this stage. Jerry? Uh, Stephanie, I'm Jerry Longman with the New York Times. Um, Felicia was talking about how when recruiting international players that the assist, her assistant coaches were not always completely truthful with what Buffalo was and how cold it was and snowy. And so I was just want, wondering if you had a funny story about that. And two, how did you learn about Buffalo and what convinced you to decide to, to go to school there? Well, firstly on the weather, Coach Cherie. Um, <laughs> it doesn't snow in Buffalo, apparently. Yep, fun fact for the world, it doesn't snow in Buffalo. Um, so that was, you know, that was a shell shock in itself. I came in December, um, like late December. So I got on the plane in Melbourne and it was 100 degrees. And then I got off at zero with one pair of brown Ugg boots, which I still wear to this day that are salt stained to the core. And you know, it was funny, honestly, to just get off the plane and everything was white. I mean, when my family came, they came in February that year and they didn't know that the lake was actually a lake. They thought it was just ice because we didn't know that there was actually water underneath there. I didn't know that till, um, when did it stop snowing? April, maybe? <laughs> so, you know, uh, that was a bit of a culture shock. But, you know, I learned about Buffalo. Um, my coach from back home, he knows Coach Cherie um, personally. And they talked a little bit. And he said, it's kind of cold up there. But he never told me anything like this. Um, and then, you know, when I got in contact with Coach Cherie, I loved how she was with the exclamation points, 100 of them per message. And, you know, it's just that excitement. And when I met Coach Jack, Every word that came out of her mouth just seemed so inspiring. And I'd never met anyone like that. And, you know, Buffalo was the only school I wanted to come to. And when I found out that maybe it was possible I wasn't coming here, I didn't want to go anymore. I planned my life out in Melbourne. I was like, I'm going to work, I'll play at this league, and, you know, I'll just play in Australia. Because I didn't want to go anywhere else. And then when I finally found out on my way to school, I had to pull over and talk to Coach Cherie, and she said, you know, we want you, we want you to come with your best friend, Courtney. I said yes without even telling my mum. <laughs> I couldn't hold it in. So, you know, I was on a FaceTime call and a Skype call with Coach Jack at school at nine o'clock in the morning. My teachers were wondering what I was doing. I had to tell them this was a bit bigger than school at that point. And um, yeah, I just said yes. I didn't even talk to my family. I told them after I really verbally committed that that was what I was doing. So, you know, this place was too good to be true in my eyes. And, you know, it's just a little buffalo, but now it's a destination. So I'm pretty grateful I made the opportunity to come here. Thank you. Amy? Yeah, Amy Morris from the Buffalo News. Sierra, can you, well, Coach shared with us a Red Lobster story from last <laughs> night. <laughs> mostly, mostly about just how you guys were laughing and don't even know what you were laughing about. But that's such a part of your, your group. But can you talk about how that impacts the way that you guys play and the way you guys are able to come to these big moments and, and not be phased? How does that help you? Um, I think it's just staying true to who we are. Um, we're, like Coach said, we're a quirky group of girls and we're, we like to have fun and we, we like to embrace everything. Um, yes, Red Lobster is my favorite restaurant and 
when she said we were going there, it kind of took me overwhelming because <laughs> I just love Red Lobster. And, um, uh, you know, just spending another day with my sisters and, and having continuing the time that we've had and along with knowing that a lot of other teams don't get the, the time to share like this, it, it, it makes me it makes me amazed and it makes me happy and it, and it shows, I think it shows the chemistry that we have off the floor and that's why it got us here today it's, um, on the floor because of the chemistry that we have. And, you know, we make jokes and we're gonna laugh and we're gonna embrace the moment, but, you know, on the floor we're serious and Coach Jack knows that it's called Focus Fun and that's what we go by and that's what she, she instills in this program. And, you know, we just embrace every moment. We love to have fun, we love to laugh. And we love to enjoy each other's company because, like we said, a lot of us are not from the same country. So this is, you know, some of the last weeks that we're going to be spending together. Of course not because Steph's going to, you know, we're going to all going to, 10 years from now, we're all going to have, you know, a little team trip, something like that. <laughs> Maybe meet at Red Lobster again. Um, yes. Uh... <laughs> and so, you know, just having fun, just embracing the moment, embracing this amazing opportunity because we don't take this lightly. Over to the left. My question is for Cassie. Matt Dowell watched Fox out of Columbia. Obviously, there's no secrets anymore about Asia Wilson's game. Everybody has seen her play at this point. What is the game plan to try and stop her from having a huge day? Um, just she's going to get hers, and we do know that. She's an amazing player. Um, I'm just going to – our goal is just to make every single shot difficult. Um, just defend like I've never defended before. Um, obviously, our guards are going to make – the the guard passing even harder for her to get the ball. Um, it's just really going to be a group effort. Um, just, yeah, just make everything hard for her. That's the goal. Over here to the right. Um, Sierra, you just have to beat the defending national champs and they, perhaps UConn. Are you guys so loose that, you know, this moment's not too big for you? There is a sense of, you know, you have nothing to lose. You're playing with house money and all that. I wonder what your mentality is about what's lying ahead of you here? Well, I think it's the same mentality that we've been using for the last two weeks. Um, I think, you know, going into the USF game, um, we were considered the underdogs. And going into the Florida State game, we were considered the underdogs. And going to the South Carolina game, we're considered the underdogs. So I think it's just a, a you know, a natural that, a natural feel that we are the underdogs and we're gonna continue to focus on Buffalo. I think that's all we can do and all we will do. And it's been working so far is just, you know, focusing on Buffalo, focusing on our game plan and staying true to who we are. Um, we can't look forward to, you know, any other game besides the game that we're gonna play on Saturday and, you know, just focusing on what we do and focusing on um, how we play and our identity is what we're gonna do and what we have to do. Over, again to the right. Cassie, you mentioned earlier in the week that you've seen South Carolina play a lot, and I, I'd imagine some of these other teams. How do you go from maybe watching these teams as a fan a month ago to now being a competitor? Um, I mean, our coaches really prepared us for that. Um, as soon as we finished last game, we were ready for this next game. So um, instead of watching it for entertainment, you figure out their tendencies. And um, once you see their specific tendencies, it's like a whole different game rather than just wow, that's a good move. You know exactly what she's probably going to do every time. So um, just looking at it from that perspective is a whole different viewpoint, and our coaches just really prepare us really well for that. Another question also from the right. Nick from News 4 in Buffalo. Steph, this is for you. I know going back to the MAC tournament, you were asked about the, the MAC team selections and uh, maybe being slighted by not being a first teamer, but now being you know an 11 seed. Um, and being considered a quote-unquote Cinderella in this year's NCAA tournament. I mean, it's not like you guys are winning these games, you know, by luck. You're blowing folks out. Do you feel slighted at all to still be considered an underdog in this tournament with how well you guys have played all season and even deep into the tournament? Um, I think we honestly embrace the underdog title. Um, you know, if the prognosis for our games is always that we're going to lose by whatever, and then we go in and beat them by 20, that's kind of exciting. And I think that, you know, we like to be considered the underdog because you go in with no expectations. I mean, people don't have the expectation we're going to win. We just believe in ourselves. And that's something we've embraced from the first day of June running. I mean, Coach Jack's always instilled in us that no one needs to believe in us but ourselves. We're a foxhole. We're 14 deep. Our coaches believe in us. Our athletic trainers, our media staff, everyone that's in our foxhole believes in us. And you know, we've embraced the underdog 
they're, you know, the reigning national champions. They have all the pressure on them. We don't have that pressure. You know, we just get to go in and play free. And that's pretty exciting. And that's what we've been doing the last two games. There was no expectation for us to win. And we like that. That's OK. You know, you can join us. We, we welcome you with open arms. You know, after every win, we welcome the fans that want to come and support us now. You know, we're not going to turn people away. I mean, if you didn't believe in us at first, that's OK. But we're going to keep proving every single day that we're a team that this country should believe in. We're a team that fight for everything that we've had and we lock our 14 horns and we go in and we fight. And you know that underdog title, it's kind of fun because you get to do that without that expectation. And you just go in and do your, do your thing. You do it your best and you leave everything out there every single game. We all know every game could be our last, the five seniors, and we leave everything out there every single time. And I mean, we love doing that. So you know, give us the underdog title. We love it. We'll own it. We'll embrace it. And we'll fight for 40 minutes and see where that takes us. We have time okay. for one or two more. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you out here. Go ahead. <laughs> you better answer that question, Mike girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, to the left. Feel too much. Uh, Joe Cook, WLTX. Um, I guess Cassie and the rest of, rest of you guys, um, Coach suggested that you guys may try a tickling approach on Angel Wilson to try to throw her <laughs> off. Will there be any tickling, and oh, what kind of stands She's out so to you ridiculous. about South Carolina? She said what? She said we would tickle her. Yeah, we're going to tickle her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, if she's getting her points, you know, we'll try anything. Um, oh, my goodness. They, as a whole, they stand out because, um, I mean, they won the national championship last year, so that's a given. Um, they do have a talented bunch, but um, I think – we match up pretty well with them, and um, we're gonna fight like we, like we always have been, and give it all we got. She said tickling. <laughs> Sierra, your family and especially your brothers have been very entertaining all year, um, and we've heard them be vocal encouragement for you. But with that high character and uh, loud voice, what's the conversation been from them the last couple days leading up into this one? Um, well, it's been still loud and vocal. Um, we have a family group chat, and it's been blowing up. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's been crazy with messages, and it's actually during the game where I don't see it until the end where I just have 300 messages after the game. Um, but it's weird because they're all together, so I don't know why they're texting in the message when they're, it's a watch party at our house <laughs> together. Um, but no, I have an amazing, amazing support staff, and um, my family's been everything to me. They're the reason why I play basketball. They're the reason why I actually came back to New York, and um, I'm able to play in this amazing program, Buffalo. Um, and not just my family, my media family, my brothers and my sister and my mom and my god brothers and all those, but Buffalo family as itself. Um, we have an amazing support cast, and it, it's overwhelming sometimes because of how much support that we get from the town of Buffalo, how much we get from around the country who are Buffalo alums, and Buffalo just has a, just an unbelievable fan of people that just support us without a doubt. And um, it's, it's great to, to be able to be a part of that family. It's great to have that support cast where um, they love the fight that you give. They love the, the success. They love the, the, you know, just the amazing people that you are. Uh, that's what it is. I think we are able to be who we are as, you know, young ladies, as basketball players, as student athletes. Whoever we are, they love that. And I think that's what helped us get to here to the Sweet 16. Ladies, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck to you tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you so much. For those with additional media inquiries, please see Louie from the University of Buffalo Sports Information. <laughs>